All right, so almost two weeks ago, I went to Poland and I played a new game called Outriders. What I didn't tell you guys is that one day before that, I actually went to Massive in Malmö and I played some new Division 2 content, to be more precise, some of the year 2 content. But before we get into the video, I want to talk about this video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. So if you somehow haven't heard about Raid Shadow Legends yet, it's a free-to-play dark fantasy RPG mobile game. It also recently added cross-device play, so you can actually play it on your PC or your phone and switch between them and keep all your progress. So let's go to the summoning portal and open some shards and get some new champions. So even if I get some bad champions or duplicates, you can always sacrifice them to make your other champions stronger. I got really lucky here and I actually got an epic champion called the Steel Skull. Here we can see other people giving him ratings. We can also see recommended artifacts and also where you can get them. If we check his skills, his first skill have a chance to put a poison debuff on attack. His second skill is a cleanse, so it cleanses the debuffs and it also heals for 40%. The third one is a buff that increases defense and it also heals all allies by 20%. The last one is a passive aura that increased defense to all allies. So it's a really, really good support champion in my opinion. And here we got the Hexweaver, which is a rare. If you look at the skills quick, I can already tell uh, I like uh, the previous epic champion more because his skills were just way, way stronger. So I'll probably end up sacrificing this champion. And here I actually got Executioner, which you can actually get for free if you go to my link in the description. Looking at his skills, I think the first skill stands out to me since it have a chance to stun. So let's sacrifice some champions to improve my epic steel skull. But I'm gonna sacrifice two of them which are duplicates. So even if they are duplicates, you get some good use of them. And here we can see I leveled up my, my epic champion. So if you want to give this game a chance as well, head to the pinned comment or the description. If you are a new player, you can get 100,000 silver, 2 clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards and the champion called Executioner. As long as you download it in the 30 upcoming days. I want to give a big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for once again sponsoring my channel. It really helps me out a lot to bring content to you guys. And not have to worry that much about all the YouTube ad stuff. And actually, yeah, pay my bills and get food on the table. But with that said, let's get into the video. So for year 2, we are getting a new expansion. Which is called Warlords of New York which is narrative driven and we are actually going back as you probably could hear on the name back to new york to hunt down keener which i guess episode 3 that releases very soon is the start of that journey i'm super excited about that since i've always been a bigger fan of the new york theme compared to washington even though that's pretty good too new york just had a special feeling to me and i, and I think to many others as well so this plays out 8 months after Division 1, so a lot have changed and we're also not in the same area as before. We're gonna be in a new area located in the southern region in Manhattan. So the expansion is heavily focused on hunting down Keener and to do so you have to track down a rogue agent that works for Keener. So the unique thing this time around with the story is that you can play it in whatever order you like. It contains 5 new story missions in unique locations across the new area in Lower Manhattan, with an open approach to completion. It got 8 interlinked side missions to unravel Keener's plan, an open world area with random world activities in the same style as yeah, Washington, but this time around you're gonna be fighting cleaners as you probably already know, but also Rikers. The cleaners and both the Rikers are stronger than before. They got upgraded equipment and yeah, since there's been like 8 months since last time, they just improved quite a lot. I really did enjoy fighting them way more than in Division 1 because a lot of the, the different NPC types were just upgraded quite a lot and it was just more challenging compared to like Division 1 in terms of how they were back then. For example, the new Riker tanks had a unique shield that covered a lot and the weak point was pretty hidden as well so you actually had to think a little bit more and, and compared to all the other NPC types they were actually quite rough but I guess that's because they were new as well though but and as a weapon the Riker tanks had like some type of nail gun so that was pretty unique as well compared to the NPCs in the game right now 
And also the Sniper Rikers had some upgraded equipment as well. They had a big shield that covered most of their body except a little bit of their head. And they also had a flashlight which made them a little bit harder to spot that little angle you had. And compared to other Sniper NPCs they were way harder to fight because of it. You will see some of it in my gameplay on the screen though. But I'm not sure if everything here is covered because this is only one main mission that I'm gonna show you guys. So yeah, a lot of this is gonna be a lot of talk. I'm not able to show everything. But yeah, I wish I could show everything, but that's just not how it works. So going back a bit to the open world area, they do have four named zones with no level gating. Which means each zone levels up along with the player, so you can actually go wherever you like. And you don't have to go to zone B or C because that's your level. You can just do it however you like. And that's how this whole expansion works in the new area. Like you can do any story mission, any side mission or anything. And the NPCs and everything will be scaled to you. The level cap is getting increased to level 40. I think this is actually quite nice to see and something I was asking for back in Division 1. Because I think that makes sense to a lot of uh, RPG games like World of Warcraft, you have Destiny, like all of those games does that. So why shouldn't Division do that? And with that, we're also getting four new skills. We got some returning skills like a Division 1 favorite. So this sticky bomb is back. It got two different versions though. One version is explosive and one is an incendiary sticky bomb. There are also a tripwire trap and a decoy. So the way you unlock and get these skills is, as I talked about before, Keener have four rogue agents that you're gonna fight. So when you beat those, you will be granted the skill that that agent use. So all of these four rogue agents use one unique skill. And when you kill them, yeah, you just get it instantly. So you will see how they work before you actually get them. Because it's a little bit of a boss fight, I would say, when you fight them. Which you will see later in this main mission. I fight the decoy guy. And I think that was pretty pretty cool and a bit new and refreshing for the vision. It's not how a lot of the boss fights were before. So I'm actually pretty happy with that approach. And I hope they, the other three fights are really good. And yeah, I can't wait to like fight Keener actually. I assume that's going to be a really good boss fight. There's also, of course, a bunch of new exotic gear and exotic weapons. New brand set, new gear sets, <laughs> new normal weapons and new named items. You won't see too much of that in the actual gameplay though. Something that I really like that they talked about, that they are adding, and especially beneficial for people that play a bit more than the normal player, is a new Infinity SHD level progression system that goes beyond level 40. So when you hit level 40, which is the new max level cap, you will still level up. If you play Diablo 3 or maybe even Borderlands, you're probably aware of a system like this. Like in Diablo, it's called the Paragon Levels. But let's just call it side levels now. So for every side level you get. So when you hit 40 and you level up. You get another side level. Like side level 1, 2, 3. And it just goes up infinity. So for every time you get a side level. You get a perk point. Which can be used to increase your character stats. Like crit, HP, armor. And so on. So I think this is a great addition as well. Because even if you're grinding. You're not getting any gear. Where you're like just unlucky with the gear you will always get some progression on the side levels and make your character stronger that way and for the people that like to brag about their playtime they they got uh, they, they can do that as well with the with those uh, side levels my favorite thing that i heard so far about this expansion in, especially in terms of uh, pv is the addition of uh, seasons i can't remember exactly everything about this so don't take everything i say now to be exact but seasons will be going for around three to four months. And it will bring you challenges to do with unique rewards only tied to this uh, season stuff. It will also bring you new playable content, new challenges for every season with leaderboards connected to that. They said it's important that rewards are good and it's not only limited to cosmetics. But it seems to be something similar to what Diablo have. I think it's a great addition to the game and it's gonna add a lot of replayability which the game kind of lacking right now so yeah sadly i don't remember too much i don't know i can't remember if you're leveling up a new character or how this works so yeah hopefully we get some more information about that though but it sounds really really good though to have something like that and something else that actually are coming back from division one are global events 
which I liked and kind of despised it in uh, Division 1. It really forced you to grind a lot during it, because if you didn't, it would take so long to actually get the gear set that you wanted. So hopefully it's a bit adjusted this time around. I think overall though it's a great addition to, to add to the game. Since it will change the gameplay experience and it gives you a reason to play the game. Which have been one of my problems with the, the game in the current state. And combining this with seasons that I just talked about. It will just add more and more replayability for PvE. Which is what I think the game really really needs. So yeah, hopefully we get some more information about that. Though. But I think just hearing that it's coming back, I think it's good. We, we, we need more and more of this replayability for PV. So I think really, really good. There was also talk about Dark Zone, but nothing that I got to play. But they did emphasize a lot that they wanted to improve on the player interaction in uh, Dark Zone. They want uh, more people to go rogue and more people to fight rogues. So just a lot of focus on that. Because they said current Dark Zone, it feels more like it's made for PV. And it's not that much player interaction, not only PvP though, but they want to emphasize on the player interaction. Even if you like team up with people or you're just fighting rogues. Maybe you're fighting solo against two rogues and they want more people to, to come and help you to fight the rogues. They just make that the focus, which I think sounds great. So hopefully we get information about that soon. And maybe they can make Dark Zone great again, you know? Other than that, there is a lot of changes and improvements to the core gameplay system to offer a more streamlined approach to the game. These improvements will be available to all Division 2 players, whatever they own the expansion or not. It is improvements to the gear game, so they want the gear to actually drop to be more useful. Instead of right now, they drops so much loot all the time, but almost most of it, if you played for a bit, is completely useless. But they wanted to reduce the, the amount of loot that drops, but more of the loot that drops will actually be useful. Which I, I'm not sure about how good that will be. Because at some point, all the loot that drops, no matter how good it's supposed to be, you're gonna have better gear, which makes it useless. So this just, to me, seems like, yeah, it's gonna be faster to make a build and gear up. But you're still gonna reach that uh, point where the gear is just useless to you. But yeah, I can still see that, yeah, like taking a, away a lot of the scraps, like sure, it will make it better and you don't have to loot as much. So, so sure, we will see how this will impact the game though, but I don't think you can ever make that change that much better. Like the only thing to me it does is that it reduces the time it takes to farm. But yeah, I guess we will see how that uh, turns out. Other than that, they have recalibration stat storing, so I guess that could go pretty well pretty well hand in hand with the, that the less gear drops and it's more useful like even if you don't want to use it for your gear you can probably take the higher stats and store it and use it at a later point and then also there is a skill power changes to how that works as well and most of that was done from requested feedback from the community and they really wanted to make it easier to understand your builds and how to build and just improve the build diversity overall in the game but i think that's about it though Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I was pretty dumb that I didn't uh, make any notes. Since after this event I did go to Poland and I played the Outriders. And I was away for like 5 more days. So usually after an event like this I go home and I write a script. This wasn't the case now so yeah. To sum up what I think I'm pretty happy with the changes and addition to PV. But PvP wise there is nothing really happening sure new gear changes and stuff will change but there is no direct changes that impacts pvp 100 percent which is something i would like to see because i think just the core base of division 2 it doesn't work that well for pvp in my opinion there's a lot of stuff that i would like to see changed and i think without that to me the pvp can't be what it used to be in division 1 even though Division 1 was a freaking mess. But there's a lot of stuff in Division 1 that I think would work better as a base for Division 2. To add more RPG to the actual PvP. But they said that's something they wanted to do as well with gear and all that. Try to make it more about having roles again in, in the game. And I think in PvP that's great to have different roles. And that's something I miss from Division 1. You use that one or two healers and two DPS. Or maybe have a final measure support hybrid and all that in division 2 i haven't played pvp in a long time though but it's not that worth to have a healer especially with how fast time to kill there is most of the time when i've seen people play three or four my group 
it's mainly just hybrids or like DPS builds. So hopefully we will see some changes in that. And the big thing is the Dark Zone changes. So if they manage to nail that and make that better, that could make Dark Zone fun again. And I really do miss Dark Zone. So if they could at least nail Dark Zone and make that uh, way more fun again, then maybe it's possible to play it. Even though I think the base of the game <laughs> as it is right now, it's not the best for PvP gameplay. But if Dark Zone is good, then, then it maybe would be playable and enjoyable for me at least you know but i'm not expecting too much when it comes to pvp in my opinion like division 2 is a pv game <clears throat> but if they would make it fun again then great amazing i would love to play it again and be back with that but i'm not expecting that like for me division 2 is uh, it's for pv to play when there is content to do but that have been lacking quite a lot in year one but with year two now global events seasons and all that hopefully that should keep us more busy but I think that's it for this video though. It would be interesting to hear what you guys think about the changes and the addition to year 2. Was it what you expected or wanted? Like let me know in the comment section and we can have a discussion. There will be a bit more videos covering new Division 2 content in the upcoming days. Probably a few hours after this video there will be a video too. Because I have like 4 or 5 videos to pump out. So yeah stay tuned for that on YouTube. And yeah hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss that. But thank you guys so much for watching. And see you guys in the next video.
I got a link to his watch, but he's running some kind of white protocol, and it's gone. Managed to get some data off it, though. Looks like system files, mostly. But I'm pretty sure he tried to access a remote backup server. Backups for the data. 